fighting is intensified between Azerbaijan and Armenia, and the regional countries are becoming part of this. So we have with us in this uh, special program the Armenian president, Armin Sarkisyan. Welcome, Mr. President, to this uh, program. Well, it's a pleasure to be at your program. We begin with the latest position from you in which you warn that the Caucasus could turn into another Syria if the battles do not stop around Karabakh and Karabakh. Why this fear and concern? Well, I, I think we have to look at the historic perspective of the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh. From the perspective of historic, I think we have to look at where is Nagorno-Karabakh, what is Nagorno-Karabakh. This is a region of historic Armenia where people were living for hundreds and thousands of years. Only during the Soviet era, Stalin has given this territory to Azerbaijan. I mean, Comrade Stalin was a great designer of divide and rule, creating problems with all nations of former Soviet Union problems between Georgia and Russia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, between Central Asia, republics, and others. So, for 70 years, Nagorno-Karabakh... Oh, sorry, Mr. President. Yes. So, uh, this historical prospect is important, but today we have conflict on beginning an all-out war. So, do you believe that this war will be long? and not just a of fighting like the past? Well, this is exactly what I'm trying to say. I think I, I have to come back to the, to the history of that. With the breakdown of Soviet Union, people of Nagorno-Karabakh clearly have expressed their desire, and this in the region of Nagorno-Karabakh then, the absolute majority of population were Armenians, as for centuries, they have expressed their desire in 1991 to become an independent state. But instead of honoring the desire of the people, Azerbaijan decided to, to fight against that and decided to send armies and start a war between Ar Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh that declared their independence as a republic and Azerbaijan. And the first war ended in, in a ceasefire in 1994. And since then, an international renowned organization that OSCE has created a platform for a dialogue, and that platform was the Minsk Group platform, which was co-chaired by United States, France, and Russia. So there were negotiations, sometimes successful, sometimes unsuccessful, and these negotiations were targeting to a peaceful resolution of the conflict. So on the 27th of uh, September this year, Azerbaijan has decided that they will not continue going this path of dialogue and finding a peaceful resolution and they decided that they can resolve this issue with Nagorno-Karabakh or Republic of Artsakh with force. So military were sent in and on the, the, along the whole line of frontier between Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan, shelling had started and that shelling is also uh, going into deep into the uh, civilian. Are you willing now to reach a peaceful solution? No, no, of course. I'm coming to that. It's very important to give that perspective. So what has changed today, that Azerbaijan is trying to resolve the issue with military force. And what has changed now, if it was be only between Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan, that we would all have the, the hope that the two will eventually, after several days of fighting, which is happening now, and there is no big movement of frontier. So Azerbaijan couldn't defeat uh, Nagorno-Karabakh in three, four days. But what has dramatically changed is the involvement of Turkey. Uh, Turkey is now involved directly with their uh, generals, with their officers, with their advisor, Mujahideens that have brought from Syria. And they are also using Turkish-made uh, drones. Turkish F-16s are involved. And there is no way that anybody internationally can interpret that by saying this is uh, ethnic cleansing. So if it was between Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan, there is a mechanism to resolve this issue peacefully, which is going through negotiations. But the moment that Turkey, the moment that Turkey is, the moment Turkey is, let me finish this. 
Let me finish my sentence, please. The moment Turkey is involved, the moment Turkey is involved, no, you are not allowing me to, to finish my sentence, my friend. Mr. President, you can still hear me, right? Okay. Yeah. The Ministry of Defense of Azerbaijan says that Armenian fighters fight uh, alongside the Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh. So how do you explain that? Well, these are Armenians, and these fighters could be from all over the world because Armenians will not allow the, another genocide in the, to be repeated after 105 years of the genocide that happened in the Ottoman Empire. These are volunteers that came to support their fellow Armenians. These are not from other country. These are not organized by any other third state, like in Azerbaijan. Like Turkey as a state is involved now in the, in the fighting against and, and uh, ethnic cleansing of Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh. If their voluntary is going to, to help their sisters and brothers, there is nothing wrong with that. So you do admit that there are Armenian fighters from outside Armenia and from outside the region fighting alongside the Armenian forces. So this is not something natural for you? Well, this is absolutely natural because we are a small state but a global nation, but it's also natural because every Armenian remem remembers that 105 years ago, ago, the same Turkey, which is now involved in Nagorno-Karabakh, has slaughtered one and a half million of Armenians. The same Turkey has dismissed and ethnically cleansed Armenians from, uh, from the Ottoman Empire and has created the diaspora. All of these people remember this. And there's no way that we as a nation or our friends... No, no, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. There is no way that Armenians will allow another genocide to happen. The president of Nagorno-Karabakh says that the war now against Nagorno-Karabakh is a war against Iran as well. Do you agree to that? This is the way the president of Nagorno-Karabakh no, that is the opinion of the president of, of Nagorno-Karabakh. This is how he interprets geopolitic changes that will happen in, in, if this war will not be stopped. Okay, Russia offered a mediation. Are you open to Russian mediation? Well, Russia, France and United States are three members of the Minsk group, they are three co-chairs. We are always open for any mediation, especially from Russia, that is a country that has good relations both with Armenia and with Azerbaijan. And of course we are open for that mediation, but mediation has to start, and the sooner the better. And of course, it is a mediation between Nagorno-Karabakh, Azerbaijan, and also Armenia, but then, Turkish presence or activities in military activities should be stopped. So, on what basis or foundation you accept this mediation, even though your Prime Minister uh, said that we are not ready to have peace talks now because the circumstances are not appropriate. Now you say you are open. So now... No, there is no contradiction. There are no contradiction between what I'm saying and my government is saying. You are asking uh, a general question. Is Armenia accepting Russian mediation if it starts working? The answer is, in principle, yes. But the mediation is a process. It starts with specific mediators, it starts with connections between military, politicians, foreign ministries. But that process has not started yet. And the answer is yes, we are ready for mediation, especially from Russia, if that mediation will be organized. If they have talked to you or to the Armenian people and you are heading them, you are their president. Well, the thing is that there are daily contacts between Armenian different departments, between the foreign minister of Armenia and Russian foreign minister. There are talks on the level of government, prime minister, so they are always talked. But they don't have yet the form and the content of being that we can call that mediation between the parties has started. 
you are connected with Russia with collective security treatment. Can you ask Russia to help you militarily in this war? We are a member of the Collective Defense Organization, where except Armenia, there are other members as well. And Armenia for the moment has not applied to that organization yet, but it has the right to applying it. We hope that international pressure on our neighbor, or I, it will be better to say on our both neighbors, first Azerbaijan and of course also Turkey, will stop this uh, ethnic cleansing that is happening in Nagorno-Karabakh and the, the war against the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh and we will not need into going to other institution or other uh, international organizations. We hope that common sense and human logic will prevail. But Armenia has the right of approaching the organization that we are a part of, of it. And we also have approached to the leadership and, or, and the organization of North Atlantic to NATO because uh, Turkey being a member of NATO is showing activities that uh, clearly are against the whole philosophy of the organization and basically getting involved in a conflict that they don't have uh, direct interest based on things that are pretending that, uh, that there are uh, uh, there are PKK uh, fighters there or there is a threat to international energy sources. Sorry, yes, please. You say that you have the right to call on Russia to help you militarily. Of course, there is a common defense uh, treaty with Russia and there is a military base of Russia and Armenia. Did Russia show willingness to enter into this conflict and take part in it? You are asking a question, and that's a question more to the President of Russian Federation, not to me. I'm ask, I am answering you, to you as the President of Republic of Armenia. We are member of a collective defense treaty organization that includes Russia as well. We have specific treaties with Russian Federation. As I told you, we are not officially approach neither Russia or the organization that includes Kazakhstan, Belarus and other in order to help us in, in this. And unless you uh, ask them, you cannot know are they ready or not. But we have the treaties. We don't want to escalate. One thing is very important. We don't want to escalate this conflict between Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and Azerbaijan to a higher level. And that is why you said in your words as well, I was warning that if, if it will be, if the confrontation will go on higher level, then Caucasus will become another Syria and God help us what will happen in the whole region. So we are trying to, to contain and to maintain as the current level and there is one important parameter or component of this maintaining or containing this conflict is Turkey. If Turkey stops bombing Armenian villages, cities in Nagorno-Karabakh, sending through their the drones and F-16s, and I think the conflict or the current conflict of the war after a while could come to some sort of a conclusion and I hope that they are, the sides, including the Azeri side, will hear what we are saying Let's go back after sorting out what is happening now, back to a negotiation table because there is no alternative. There is no way that militarily this issue will be resolved. And if we don't hear this message, what will happen? Thousands of people will die. And what will be the result? A big disaster for both nations, for both Azerbaijan and Armenia. Okay, the other side says uh, let Armenia withdraw from this region because uh, this present is not recognized and there is international recognition of the sovereignty of Azerbaijan. So 
that the Armenians pull out and then this conflict will end, what do you say? Well, uh, I think it's not recognized, but it takes time for recognition, first of all. And the best way of recognition is if Nagorno-Karabakh, in a dialogue with Azerbaijan, will finally come to a conclusion that both sides will agree on the future structure of relations between Azerbaijan and Nagorno-Karabakh and the future of Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. So that's the best recognition. Okay, if one, two, three or ten countries will recognize and Azerbaijan will not, the issue will not be resolved. So the main path, the way to resolving this issue is not being recognized by one or two or three, which probably helps. But at the end of the day is the dialogue between Azerbaijan and Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. That's number one. Number two, when we are speaking about territorial integrity, we have to not forget that what I was trying to say at the beginning of our discussion, which is Nagorno-Karabakh, the whole region, was a part of Azerbaijan only under Soviet Empire. It was not a part of Azerbaijan before, never, for hundreds of years and maybe more, thousands of years. It was given to Azerbaijan by Stalin. When you speak about integrity, and if you mean what comrade Stalin has created, then the, that's the creation of an empire, Soviet empire. And as in a normal human society, or societies, or environment like happened in Europe, when Yugoslavia started disintegrated, every nation claimed for their independence and there was nothing wrong with that. Because I can give you an example of a more human and natural way of resolving these issues through the will of people and through dialogue. In United Kingdom, the, in, no, let me finish, let me finish. No, 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 let me finish. In United Kingdom, the Scotland has decided through referendum to express their desire for independence. And England, Great Britain didn't say no. They allowed Scottish people to have a referendum. And if the referendum was positive, then probably Scotland would have been an independent state today. But it was negative. Why? Why on earth in United Kingdom they can behave like in a human normal society and in the case of Azerbaijan, when the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, where 90% of the people for centuries were Armenians, has expressed in a referendum to have independence. Why on earth Azerbaijan is sending army? Why on earth they're asking Turkey to bomb these civilians and do another ethnic cleansing? Can you explain that to me? Mr. President, do you expect that Iran be involved in this conflict? I hope, again, that this conflict, this war which is happening, will not include anybody else. I hope that Turkey will be, I hope soon to be, will be excluded. And I hope nobody else will be included. And that is why we're not approaching others. Because any new inclusion will create another 10 times higher tension and a conflict that not could be stopped. So instead of including Iran or Russia or anybody else, I would like to see exclusion of Turkey from this conflict. So who do you call on now to exclude Turkey? Who do you want to exclude Turkey? I am calling to international community to put pressure on Turkey, everybody that understands the Turkish involvement in this conflict is unproportional, unjustified, it's against all international laws and, and agreements. And Turkish involvement reminds me, others, many friends and non-friends abroad, about the genocide of Armenians in 105 years ago in Ottoman Empire, where they wanted to move out Armenians and they had other uh, excuses then, like they are using this or that excuse today about international energy pipelines, PKK soldiers, which is all nonsense. 
And in, during the 1915, they were using that Armenians were Christian, they will support Russians and so on and so forth. That's all our excuses and the goal is clear. Ethnic cleansing, moving Armenians from the land that they were living for thousands of years in Nagorno-Karabakh out. And this is unacceptable. So we are approaching international community to put pressure on Turkey because Turkey has become the big negative factor in this conflict that will not allow people going back to normal negotiating table. You have heard several times from me, I am for negotiated solution because I don't believe in any other ones. There is only one human way of solving problems, that's a dialogue. Can dialogue start now uh, according to what is on the ground without any changes uh, to start ceasefire and to start dialogue? Is this acceptable for me? You, the, my friend, my friend, what you are saying now, can the dialogue start now when the F-16s are killing women and children bombing the villages and the cities? How do you start, how do you start negotiations when Turkey, which is not a party of this conflict, is bombing uh, cities and villages, not only the military, but cities and the villages of Nagorno-Karabakh? Explain to me, how do you imagine that sort of, how do you start negotiation? First of all, to, Turkey has to withdraw from this conflict. They should not be a party to this conflict. And then after that, the Azeri side, Nagorno-Karabakh, and of course Armenia, will decide when to go to stop the hostilities and when to go to negotiating table again. But I urge everybody to do that, the sooner the better. And I urge Turkey not to be the one that will be destroying the whole region with their activities. But Turkey until now denies that it has interfered directly. She says it supports the, the Azeris and uh, it denies the, uh, the direct intervention until now. What do you say? And basically what Turkey is saying and doing and it's not only in Armenia, it, it was the same in Syria, it was the same in Mediterranean, in Libya, in Iraq. I just uh, remember words which were said by one of the greatest American presidents who said that you can fool all people for some time. You can fool some people for a long time, but you cannot fool all people all the time. So Turkey is fooling international community here. Uh, Turkey intervened in Syria directly and it announces that and it does not hide it. So Turkey is, yeah, but Turkey is interfering in Nagorno-Karabakh and pretending that they are not interfering. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of facts now how the Turkish drones are involved, how the Turkish military is, is on the ground in Azerbaijan and how the F-16s are bombing the Nagorno-Karabakh. So Turkey says that and I'm saying uh, this. So you take whichever you like, but there are civilians dying today under the shelling that comes from the other side of Nagorno-Karabakh, from Azerbaijani side, where Turkey is fully involved. And my question is very simple. Why on earth Turkey decided to be involved in this conflict? Couldn't Azerbaijan, that is much more bigger than Nagorno-Karabakh, handle this? Why on earth Turkey decided to come into this uh, bloody war that is killing people? Of course they say there is a threat to international energy pipelines. What is absolute uh, nonsense. Why it is nonsense? Because if Armenians would like to bomb the international pipelines, they, they probably would have bombed it 20 years ago when they were building the pipeline to stop the pipeline being there. But the pipeline is there for 20 years and Azerbaijan has made billions of dollars. And Azerbaijan is using these billions of dollars to buy weapons, 
to, to kill the same Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh. So telling that Armenians today are thinking of bombing the Baku Tbilisi Cheyhan is wrong, is a lie. Sorry, Mr. President, our time is up. Thank you so much for being with us. Our time is up. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you, Al Jazeera. Thank you very much.